friends, welcome to Kyoto. I wish to begin by thanking all of those who have been working hard in the preparation for what is promised to be a magnificent and important gathering of archaeologists and heritage specialists from all over the world. In a way, everyone present has been involved in the process, and I am effectively thanking you all for being here at all. That itself is a remarkable achievement for each of us, for the World Archaeological Congress, obviously, for the world of archaeologies, and for those who live through and live with the past. That effectively means every one of us. However, I should like to be allowed to narrow down and specifically thank all the members of the local organizing committee of Work 8 Kyoto, particularly for overcoming a number of obstacles and indeed barriers that unfortunately continue to divide us, prominently including the language barrier. In this globalized world, English has emerged as a de facto lingua franca, and international discussive fields and communities, including the World Archaeological Congress, are, in a way, forced to choose English as a de facto common language in order to sustain our communication. We know we should do something about it, but currently, we have no viable solution yet, admittedly. But we, the non-native English speakers, know how difficult it is to put nuances and implications that we can freely use in our own daily language use in our English speaking and writing. Doing so also erodes our sense of security and identity. However, Please do not take my saying this as a complaint. I am saying this to emphasize the fact that we all are daily confronted with many other barriers that not only divide us, but bring various injustices to the world. Those barriers are, namely, the economic barrier, social barrier, cultural barrier, the mental barrier, the material barrier, to name but a few. Some barriers have been with us since the beginning of humanity, but many of them emerged as a human being entered into a social formation called modernity. Those barriers have since been ever increasingly connected to discrimination of all sorts, depriving peoples of their identities and chances to live their lives the way they wish to live. Our community, the World Archaeological Congress, came into being exactly 30 years ago when we, quite simultaneously across the world, came to feel we had to do what we could to address and redress those causes of injustices and human sufferings through doing archaeology. And surely, archaeology and the world have changed drastically and indeed dramatically in the past 30 years. Speaking of archaeology, we have come to recognize that we are doing archaeologies in plural, not archaeology with capital A. It is because we do archaeology in different social settings with different historical trajectories and identity formations that naturally make our attitude to the past, the present, and the future different from one another and make 
what we would like to know and how we would like to know them different from one another either. However, we should not mislead ourselves here. We share a common goal, that is, through doing archaeology, to do something good to entire humanity and to contribute to the protection and the furtherance of basic human rights across the world. To try to accomplish that goal, we have to communicate with one another as much as possible share our daily experiences, academic or otherwise, and cross-germinate and nurture our archaeological imaginations. And for that purpose, we have to try to get over and indeed get across the barriers I mentioned earlier. Saying is easy, however, the condition in which we have to try those things is admittedly getting worse and worse. The relentless march of neoliberalism contributes to fragment our discursive communities and harmfully spread the attitude to attribute the cause of social problems, not to political governance, but to the personal failure of the individual. As an archaeologist, I can easily dispute this and condemn this. We have survived communally and also differentiated and responded to communal problems since the beginning of humanity. And we archaeologists can convincingly say that that is the human nature. Therefore, I say, neoliberalism is wrong and does not give us any source of imagination for us to imagine better archaeologies and a better world. However, on the ground, the actual concrete picture is even worse. The proliferation of extremism of all sorts, ranging from the religious through eco-cultural to political, led by the spread of the neoliberal paradigm and the destruction of communal life worlds is resulting in the destruction of cultural heritage and the human suffering, the latter often genocidal. How can we confront this onslaught against humanity? I would say we have to organize ourselves flexibly and robustly both in our theorizing, our strategies, in our daily practices. We have to overcome theoretical, methodological barriers associated with the theory producer versus consumer divide, and the data producer versus consumer divide. We also have to overcome materialist mentalist divide associated with the scientific archaeology versus historical narrative creation archaeology divide. We have to recognize the importance of communication in every possible discussive space of archaeology, and we have to recognize the fact that both mental and material factors are equally significant in the formation and indeed reformation of the world. How can we actually realize and implement those goals? The answer is, I believe, the creation of an ideal speech situation. By the word ideal speech situation, I mean 
In such a situation, we exchange information and opinion, evaluate them and continually discuss how best we can use those for the achievement of common goals, not at all biased by each other's social, cultural, political, historical, and economic background. We human beings have not quite construct necessary infrastructure to realize such a situation. And the various international organizations, including the United Nations and the World Archaeological Congress, are trying to facilitate our ongoing endeavor to construct the infrastructure for the achievement of an ideal speech situation. And here, I should like to plead to all of you gathering from all over the world today. Let us set our differences aside completely during work eight. Let us put our efforts together to realize an ideal speech situation during work eight. And let us prove ourselves and show the world it is indeed possible. I wish you every success in your individual contributions to this remarkable occasion, marking the 30th anniversary of the World Archaeological Congress, but I should like to reiterate that our goal in work 8 is to prove ourselves and show the world we archaeologists are not only trying to, but actually can do something good to the world. Thank you. Have a wonderful time. And let us celebrate together being archaeologists here in Kyoto. Thank you.